If you brought your Bibles with you this morning, I'd encourage you to turn to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 64, verses 1 to 2. We're going to zero on this just for a few moments this morning. I'm going to be 11 minutes and 30 seconds this morning. So start your stopwatches, 11 minutes and 30 seconds. Here we go. Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 to 2. It says this, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. More than any other time, church, we need a fresh fire. We need a fresh fire of the Holy Ghost upon our lives today. And I believe that. I believe that with all of my heart. Nothing, absolutely nothing can answer the confusing questions that the enemies are raising today than the fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. I believe, friends, with all of my heart, that there is a spirit more powerful than any other spirit, and it's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. And when fresh fire falls, the waters boil. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. When this water is flowing in you and the fire of God falls upon it, it will boil and the name of the Lord will become known to his adversaries and nations will tremble before him. Friends, this is a secret of the lives that we discover the apostles lived. They had a fresh fire in them and every prayer meeting Every gathering, every opportunity that the apostles were together was an opportunity to get refreshed and filled again with the Holy Spirit. There was power and fire in the way that they moved, in their evangelism and ministries, and in everything that they did. No wonder they were accused. The apostles were accused of turning the city upside down. You know what, friends? My heart, and I believe it's your heart as well, that this community, this beautiful community that we live in, this Sogging Shores community, would be turned upside down for Jesus Christ. I believe it's possible. I believe it's possible for every single man woman, boy, and girl, for every human being that lives in this beautiful town to come to know Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. And you know what? He's going to use all of us and every Bible-believing, preaching church in this community to fulfill that awesome mandate, to fulfill that awesome, awesome mandate, that awesome mission, until every eye has heard and every ear has heard his message. How do we receive a fresh outpouring? How many would love to receive a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit? How many are believing for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit in 2018 in your life? Do you declare it already this morning, a fresh outpouring? Do you receive it? You know what I love is I love the fact that the children are raising their hands. Praise the Lord. To receive a fresh outpouring, we need to do a few things. First, this morning and quickly, we need to hunger and thirst for the Word of God. How many completed the Read the Bible in 2017 this year that I faithfully emailed every Monday except two Mondays in the entire year? How many finished? A few of you. Praise the Lord. We've got an exciting announcement coming tomorrow in your inboxes. When a person is hungry or thirsty and he or she sees food or drink, That person grabs it with speed and would almost finish it before he or she 
realizes it. Both hunger and thirst, friends, are feelings that will insist on being filled or satisfied before they leave a person in peace. We can never really fully appreciate this until we have children. And let me tell you, when children are hungry, they do not rest until they have something in their stomachs. I know some adults like that, myself included, but... A Christian cannot get very far with the Lord if all that he or she does is read a verse or scripture a day or per day. And if what the person read is not even understood or digested. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3 it says this. And he humbled you and let you hunger and feed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 4, verse 4, And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man should not live by bread alone, but every word of God. You see, friends, some people are depending on what they learned years ago. Many claim that their minds are possibly getting old and can't retain anything. Do you know what, friends? It's a pity that God won't take such excuses from anyone. At the same time, the devil... The devil will take advantage of this type of ignorance towards the word of God and deal with them, some that are not even bothered. Many people will feed their bodies with all kinds of nourishing food and they will spend time at the gym and do all things. But when it comes to feeding the spirit with the word of God, They start to slow down, in some cases, disregard it completely. Do you know that some some believers don't even read the Bible? All they read is a pamphlet that talks about Bible stories. Do you know many, many today in the church are lazy when it comes to reading the Word of God? They prefer watching movies or things on YouTube or the internet that will not help them in any way. You see, the devil knows more of the word of God that you have in your possession, the more powerful you are. So the enemy, the evil one, is going to do whatever he can to keep you from reading and discovering what's in this book, the Word of God. Let's go a few others. Become a prayer warrior. The Bible says to pray without what? To pray without ceasing. Let's unpack this. Prayer is by means the which we communicate with God, and He is never tired of listening to His children. The Bible says that we are His children, and He's never tired of listening to us. Even though he wants to avoid repetitions, he does not want us to stop praying. Friends, power is prayer. Power equals prayer. The Bible says, remember the name of Jehovah. Give him no peace until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it a spring in the earth. Third, live a life of holiness. The Bible says without holiness, no man can see God. Live a sinless life. In other words, this morning, thoughts and deeds in all that we do. Fourth, complete obedience to God. Whatever God asks you to do personally or through his words must be done without questioning. Do not argue with God for or against. 
When he asks you to do anything, it might not sound logical, but do it. Take that leap of faith and listen to the voice of God. Anybody been there? Where God asks you to do something and you know it's God. I'm not saying that we become reckless in our, in our faith. What I'm saying this morning is some of you, God has been asking you to do something awesome. For his kingdom. Wasn't that wonderful last week to see all that talent up here on Christmas Eve? You know, I believe in my spirit that God is working on some hearts and lives from preparing some people to do ministry in our church that I didn't even know was there. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I seen a future worship team up here last weekend. I don't know if you did, but I seen a future worship team. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm excited. <laughs> Have a great desire for the return of the Lord. You know what? We've been in the last days since Jesus ascended into heaven. We've been in the last days for 2,000 years. We could be another 2,000 years. Only the Father knows. But we need to have a great desire for the return of the Lord. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 4, it says this. See what kind of love the Father has given to us. That we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practice lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You see, friend, you have to be expectant of his coming, that he could come back at any time. He could come back before we leave here today. By so doing, you will not mind the things of this world. You will not do anything that would displease the Lord. We are to keep our spiritual posture, that of looking and waiting for the Lord to return. The Bible says that he's coming back. And he's coming back for a people who are called by his name. Take God for his word. Don't be the kind of believer that would grumble and cry whenever there's a problem. You see, the apostles knew God and took him at his word. Love sacrificially. Love everybody. It is an act that depicts our adherence to the Lord. He says, in the Bible, by this, men shall know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Friend, it is my conviction, and you know this about me, that we should be experts in loving people. We, as the body of Christ, should be experts in loving people, but I am no expert myself. I have weak moments. We all do. I'm thankful this morning that God uses me, uses you in spite of myself as we surrender ourselves and come as we are and say, Lord, use me, use me. And I believe that by his spirit, he uses us. My conviction is this morning that with these things, with these seven points, if we apply them to our lives, we should be able to walk towards the fresh fire that is needed for this year, that is needed for this time, for such a time as this. God himself, friends, God himself has called us. However, the extent to which he uses each one of us, the extent to which he uses an individual depends on the extent to which the person to which we yield ourselves 
to him. So today, I say, Lord, I yield myself to you. Will you? Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this precious family that you have blessed us with here at this church. Thank you for what you've done in 2017, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. And Lord, as we look forward into 2018, beginning in just a few hours, Lord, we pray that you would be the forefront of our thoughts. That, Lord, before anything else, we would give you thanks for giving us another year to look forward to. Lord, we know that there are lots of people that still need to hear your awesome saving message. Possibly in our families, but we know in this community. And so, Lord, we pray and we declare that this year that we will do everything we can to introduce them to you. Lord, we pray for the remainder of our time together here today. We pray, Lord, that you will bless the food and the hands are prepared. Lord, we pray that every conversation that we have with each other today would be glorifying to your name, every word, every thought. And Lord, we pray as we go skating. Lord, we pray that as we mingle with the community on this Sunday afternoon, that, Lord, that your love will shine through, that, Lord, that we will have opportunity to share your love, and that, Lord, that you will give us the words to say as the questions come. But more importantly, Lord, that we would be a people of love this afternoon and going forward. We pray all of this in your precious name, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Who had their stopwatch going? God bless you. Have a wonderful day.